Today I'm going to show you how to shoot a time lapse using your Fuji camera. I have the XS10 here, but it could work on the XH2S, which I'm filming on, or any other Fuji camera. I do have the XM1, which is about nine years old. I noticed the menu doesn't include <laughs> the interval timer that you need for this. So just check your menu out and, and you'll see if you should be able to. But in the last few years, all the models are pretty much the same. So why would you want to shoot a uh, time lapse is because you are capturing a scene and it's changing over time and you want to show how busy it is or the changes in light, like a sunset, the changes the light does to the landscape. Uh, maybe the busy busyness of a location, like maybe you're in Italy and you're at a port. You're watching the boats come and go, something like that. So uh, I'm going to show you these steps. The first thing you want to do is you want to turn your camera on. You're going to press your menu button and you're going to go to, in this case, the third tab is the camera icon, which is the shooting menu. And in the shooting menu, you're going to go over and page down until you find interval timer shooting. You're going to select that by hitting your joystick to the right or your D-pad to the right. It's going to ask you to set an interval. Now here's what you need to know. If you choose a short interval, let's say at one second, your camera is going to take a picture every second. So let's say you're taking a picture of clouds. Clouds don't move very quickly and so every picture one second apart is not going to show a lot of change frame to frame. So if you're doing something slow moving like clouds, maybe you do 30 seconds or one minute. However, if you're doing cars, maybe you want something a little closer together because a car in a frame, let's say you're taking a picture of an intersection, a car enters the intersection and within a second they're gone. So maybe you want something like a second. Now there's other considerations for how to set your exposure, but let's just say we're not doing any slow shutter work, we're just capturing the image. Let's say it is a sunset. So we set it to take a picture every 10 seconds, let's say. The next screen over, it's gonna ask you number of times you want that shutter to open and capture an image. And so you can set it to 999, you can set it to infinity, you can set it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All these options. Now I usually set it to infinity or 999 because I am going to be there with the camera and I'm gonna stop it when the scene has kind of expired. You know, the sun has gone down or I've captured enough uh, for my uh, purposes. But you can predetermine, let's say you're gonna make a short video clip, like a 15 second Instagram reel. We know 24 frames equals um, one second of video. So you could say 15 seconds times 24, do that math, and that's how many exposures you need to make video. Time lapses take time. So if you need 360 shots and they're 10 seconds apart, you multiply that to find out how long you have to sit there while your time lapse gets created. And then the next thing is you're gonna set the starting time. So this is called start waiting time on the XS10. And so you can set it to start in a minute, start in 30 minutes, because maybe you have it on a tripod and you just want it to automatically start because you've calculated like the sunset, for example, some naturally occurring kind of scheduled event. Um, but I usually just say, okay to start because I want it to start right away. Um, now, I highly recommend you have a tripod so this is not moving, your camera's not moving during these exposures. And what happens is after the end of all these exposures, whether you've timed it uh, for a certain number of exposures or you're stopping it by hitting the shutter button to take that final frame, is you have X number of frames, uh, could be JPEG, could be RAW, depending on your settings. Again, remember your image quality settings will determine that. You can put them into a photo processing program, but eventually you're gonna drop those into a timeline and put them all back to back in the correct sequence, the earliest one first and the latest one last. And then you uh, just select them all and then you can drag that to however long you want that, uh, that to be. Because when you import them, normally there'll be a second an image, which is a very, very long video. So that's how easy it is. I'm gonna show you some samples now and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what was going on in these so you can understand there's different effects that you can get by the composition, where, where you point your camera, what's changing in front of your camera. In this example taken at the beach, I'm using the XH2S and the internal interval timer, one shot every 10 seconds, 
So I had to sit there about an hour while the sun was rising and you'll see it's at F20 because that sun's going to be bright coming over the horizon. And so I put these all together, an hour of images to create like a 15 second time lapse and uh, turned out great. But all this is to grab a dynamic, dramatic scene that's changing or unfolding be before you and to help people get that emotion of that moment or kind of experience what you experienced over time in a compressed format. Here's a problematic time lapse because not enough in the scene is changing. But a minute after this, I turned around and shot a different angle. Now I'm shooting from the other side of the pool and while there's no clouds in the sky, there are the shadows that are emerging over the pool and up the hedge from the setting sun. And this makes a much more dramatic time lapse. In contrast to the last examples where I had one 400th of a second, the shutter speed here is 0.6 seconds. So in each image, the cars become streaks of headlights and taillights. Great storytelling tool. Do not be afraid to try time lapsing with your Fuji camera and leave a comment and let me know if you do. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. Thanks. This has been helpful. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you might use it on, and I'll see you in the next video.